Welcome. This video is part of a series of videos that will assist you in the proper installation of your PowerFlex series drive. This video focuses on cabling, specifically installation issues associated with cable length on the output side of the drive. The two main reasons to be concerned about motor cable length are reflected wave and cable charging current. The remainder of this video will focus on understanding these issues, identifying if your installation will experience problems and steps that can be taken to mitigate these issues. Before reviewing steps that can be taken, to reduce the effects of reflected wave, first an explanation of reflected wave. To understand reflected wave, look at the voltage output on a typical AC drive. Modern drives use IGBT transistors to create a voltage waveform to the motor. The oscilloscope trace above shows two waveforms. The red waveform represents the AC current flowing to the motor. The green waveform represents the output voltage waveform coming out of the drive. This voltage waveform is made up of a series of voltage pulses. The duration of the pulse will vary depending on the speed the motor is being commanded to go. When these pulses leave the drive, the motor cable represents an impedance to this voltage. These cables contain inductance and capacitance directly proportional to their length. The windings of the motor also have an inductance and capacitance associated with them. Typically, for a given length of wire, impedance of the winding of the motor will not match the impedance of the cabling to the motor. The impedance mismatch results in a ringing of the voltage at this point of connection. Shown here is a picture of the voltage pulse to the motor. The red line shows the voltage ringing due to this impedance mismatch. If the voltage magnitude of the ringing exceeds the insulation rating of the winding, also known as the motor corona inception voltage rating, the motor will eventually fail. The typical symptom a user will see if they have experienced this problem is a hardware overcurrent or other current faults similar to the drive starting into a dead short. Shown here is a motor that experienced a failure due to reflected wave. The failure is difficult to see unless it is known what you are looking for. Motor failures associated with reflected wave will always show up in the first winding of the motor. Now that reflected wave has been reviewed, how do you know if there will be a problem with a given installation? In short, how long is too long? Rockwell Automation has a table to determine this. This is given in Appendix A of the Wiring and Grounding Guidelines. To read this table, first find the power rating of your drive. See the column with the red arrow? Once this has been done, the row going across can be read. Looking at the table going across, there are three major headers, no solution, reactor only, and reactor and damping resistor. These columns describe what is between the output of the drive and the motor. No solution would mean only wire is between the drive and the motor. Reactor only means a 3% output reactor is between the drive and the motor. Reactor and damping resistor means there is a 1321 RWR output reactor with damping resistor between the drive and the motor. 
Under each solution are four different voltages. 1000 volts, 1200 volts, 1488 volts, and 1600 volts. These voltages represent the insulation rating of the motor windings. Typically for a 480 volt motor, an inverter duty rated motor is rated 1488 volts. Non-inverter duty rated motors typically are 1200 volts. Contact your motor supplier to determine this rating if you are unsure. Use the 1000 volt rating if this rating cannot be determined. Once the motor power rating and winding voltage insulation rating is known, the maximum motor cable length can be found. For an example, look at a 15 kilowatt motor with a carrier frequency of 4 kilohertz and a motor insulation of 1488 volts. With only wire between the drive and the motor, the motor can be up to 500 feet away. With an output reactor, the drive can be 1200 feet away. In this scenario, adding a damping resistor to the output reactor would not result in any additional motor cable length over just a reactor. Cable charging current is another issue that needs to be considered when longer cable lengths are being used. This slide shows the parasitic capacitance and inductance due to the high frequency switching. When considering the cabling from the drive to the motor, the equivalent circuit of the cable would be an RLC network. There is a parasitic capacitance between the cable and the next cable and the next cable and ground. Cable charging current would be the summation of all the currents associated with the cable to cable currents and cable to ground currents. Common mode current is a subset of cable charging current and only includes cable to ground currents. The drive needs to supply this additional current every time a transistor is fired. This additional current only becomes an issue with smaller drives, typically less than 2 horsepower. When experiencing this problem, the drive will trip on hardware overcurrent on a start, and the motor will never run. To avoid this issue, several techniques can be used. Using larger cable will physically separate the wires and have thicker insulation on the wire. This combined effect will reduce the capacitance of the wire and reduce the cable charging current. Adding a common mode choke or an output load reactor will increase the impedance between the drive and the motor and will also reduce the cable charging current. Lowering the PWM frequency will reduce the frequency of the transistors firing and will also lower the cable charging current. Many times the drive has to be increased in size to be able to provide this additional current. To determine the amount of cable charging current associated with your system, contact a Rockwell Automation representative and be prepared to provide specific information about your system, including cable length, size, and type of cable. For more information on reflected wave phenomenon and cable charging current, please reference our Drives Wiring and Grounding Guidelines, publication DRIVES-IN001. For other cabling considerations, please watch our other cabling videos covering cable routing and cable types.